Coming in at number 10, we have William Shakespeare's grave. Billy Bob Shakespeare is one of my favourite historical figures of all time for many, many reasons, but mainly because I loved his drama. William Shakespeare died in 1616 and wrote 39 plays, 154 sonnets, and two long narrative poems. My favourite Shakespeare play is probably The Winter's Tale. It's a classic problem play and I really enjoy it, but I also do love Macbeth as a close second. So, as we know, the famous English writer had a flair for drama drama and a great sense of humour. With that in mind, of course he decided to place a curse on his grave. He's buried at the Holy Trinity Church in his home of Stratford-upon-Avon. On his grave he wrote, Good friends, for Lev's sake forbear, to dig the dust enclosed here. Blessed be man spares these stones, and cursed be he who moves my bones. Good on you, Bill. You don't want anyone messing with your bones, I feel you. When the church was restored in 2008, care was taken to keep his bones safe. I might just curse my own grave so that I don't end up getting thrown out in the trash. Good thinking. Coming in at number 9, we have the Shugbro inscription. The thing is about this tube message is that we have no idea what it says. The Shugborough monument can be found in the grounds of Shugborough Hall in Staffordshire in England. The monument depicts the Shepherds of Arcadia, in which shepherds stand around a tomb. Now the monument contains a very cryptic message that reads O-U-O-S-V-A-V-V -V, and this is framed by the letters D and M. A lot of people that think that this is a code and the monument is regularly hailed as one of the world's top unsolved ciphers. Adding to the mystery, fingers of the stone's figurines touch the letters N and R on the phase et in Arcadia EGO. So what does this mean? Some of the world's top minds, Charles Darwin and Charles Dickens included, have actually failed to solve the text. Coming in at number 8 we have the cursed tablets. In 2003, four cursed tablets were found in the grave of a young woman who died around 2400 years ago in Greece. Brilliant. Back in the day it seems that cursed tablets were very popular and people would inscribe curses on metal and offer them to the gods. Burying tablets with the dead was believed to give the tablets direct access to the gods who would then decide to do the curses bidding. The curses were aimed at then local innkeepers Demetrios and Fangoria. One of the curses found in the grave read, cast your hate upon Fangora and Demetrios and their tavern and their property and their possessions. I will bind my enemy in blood and ashes with all the dead. Blimey. Another one of the curses found in the grave wished a dog ear curse upon them. Of course. From dog curses to donkey curses up at number 7. The Egyptians, as we know, were a scary bunch when it came to protecting their final resting places. Well, it seems that a donkey curse was famously found on the tomb of Deir el Bari Graffito. The donkey curse invoked the god Seth, a donkey who would rape those who violated the tomb. We hear a lot about how the curse of King Tut came true, but we have no idea if the curse here came true because nobody wants to admit that they got harassed by a donkey, do they? They. Coming in at number 6, we have Amenhotep's shopping list. The ancient Egyptians were so dramatic, including Amenhotep, son of Hapu, who died in 1300 BC. In life, he was a priest and a scribe, and a lover of melodrama, I bet. He inscribed one of the more inventive curses that I've ever read on the doors of his final resting place. This curse actually kind of made me laugh. It reads like a shopping list of plague and pestilence. He wrote, He who enters this tomb will lose the earthly possessions and honours, be incinerated in a furnace, in excretion of rights, capsize, drown at sea, have no successors, receive no tomb or funerary offerings of their own, and their bodies would decay because they will starve and have no sustenance and their bones will perish. Good. Great. You get a car. No, you get a car. No, you get a car. Plagues, plagues everywhere. Coming in at number 5, we have this warning. Ah. I can't think of anything scarier than going to visit the tombstone of a loved one and finding these tasteless warning signs. Councillors in Plymouth in England placed garish yellow warning signs on the graves that they had deemed unsafe or hazardous. Basically they were worried that they were going to topple over at some point. I'm all about preventing some danger, but honestly bright yellow signs that cover the name of the person buried, for me it's a bit of an eyesore. Mourner Paul Ford found his grandparents grave had one of the signs on and spoke out about how disrespectful it was, and how the message could have been at the back of the grave. True. Coming in at number 4, we have Spooky Old Midnight Mary. It seems that a very scary message can be found on a grave at the Evergreen Cemetery in New Haven. The inscription is 
actually a very ghostly warning. The grave belongs to Mary E. Hart, who died under strange circumstances in 1872. Around the top of her grave reads, The people shall be troubled at midnight and pass away. It seems that Mary was considered somewhat of a witch in her era, and some even say that she haunts the New Haven graveyard to this day, taking souls to the underworld with her if they're by her grave at the stroke of midnight. Of course, these are probably just urban legends made up to match her spooky gravestone, although I still wouldn't want to be around at midnight just in case. You were waiting for him, here he is, coming in at number 3 we have King Toot's Terror. Do not disturb an ancient Egyptian tomb. Message received loud and clear, although it only took the deaths of six people for us to realise. Now a lot of you will be familiar with the curse of the pharaohs and what happened with Tutankhamun's grave, so I will just recap really quickly. In 1922, Egyptologist Lord Carnarvon and archaeologist Howard Carter were the first to enter King Tut's tomb. Carnarvon died from a mosquito bite to the cheek shortly after the tomb was open, a similar mark was also found on the king. George J. Gold, Audrey Hepburn, Hugh Evelyn White, Aaron Ember and Archibald Douglas Reed also died shortly after coming into contact with the tomb or someone who had entered. It seems that outside the burial chamber was an inscription that read, Death shall come on swift wings to him who disturbs the peace of the king. Hmm. Also found in the tomb was a warning on a bracelet that read, Cursed be he who moves my body, to him shall come fire, water and pestilence. Now the man on the receiving end of this bracelet actually did have his house burned down, then when it was rebuilt it was hit by a flood. Interesting. Coming in at number 2 we have a curse upon the bullies. Well, Mary of Whalingport, Massachusetts certainly got the last word, didn't she? It seems that Mary C. Delency was a nuisance in her community. She believed her neighbours were up to no good and she would shine lights into their properties. She owned a lot of cats and would spend hours feeding pigeons, which is kind of sweet, but it also seems like she was quite the recluse. She felt her neighbours bullied her and she was unwilling to let bygones be bygones. In one final act of revenge, she wrote on her tomb, May eternal damnation be upon those in Whalingport, who without knowing me, have maliciously vilified me. May the curse of God be upon them and theirs. Um. Cool. Just curse the whole community then. Cheers babe. Mary died in 1985 and it seems that her curse got lost in the post as the people of Whalingport don't believe they've come across any misfortune whatsoever. The woman who actually moved into Mary's old home said to a local newspaper that the curse didn't bother her. She said, I was frankly saddened for this lady who must have had so much turmoil in her life that she'd put this on her gravestone. Another member of the community wrote, Nobody even takes it seriously of course. It's a funny thing. We all laugh about it. Ooh, rough ride for old Mary. Finally coming into number one, one tomb that should never have been disturbed, we have Tamerlane's Terror. Did it unleash Hitler? Maybe. Tamerlane founded the Timurid Empire in the 14th century, stretching across Central Asia and Persia. Tamerlane was also known as Timur and was buried in modern day Uzbekistan, and his burial chamber was infiltrated by Soviets. Written on the wall, there was a very scary message indeed. When I rise from the dead, the world shall tremble. Whomsoever opens my tomb shall unleash an invader more terrible than I. Now, Tamerlane was indeed terrible. The Middle East and parts of India were ransacked with their populations massacred. So did they heed this warning? Did they hell? Soviet anthropologists dug him up and what happened? Adolf Hitler launched Operation Barbarossa, the largest military operation of all time. Now, a lot of people were killed, to just put that extremely lightly. When Stalin found out, he actually had Tamerlane reburied with full Islamic rites. Days later, the Soviets eventually and finally won a battle at the Battle of Stalingrad. Hitler did continue to plague the world for another three years though, is this why? Coming into number 10, we have this creepy angel skeleton. Also, it's alongside a really creepy hard hitting message. Ok, I personally don't know what is creepier, this terrifying as F statue of basically a winged skeleton kissing the face of a stone corpse or the inscription. The inscription reads, The blood in his veins grows cold and all strength is gone. Faith has been extolled by his fall into the arms of death. Amen. I understand that for some people death isn't a jovial occasion, but can we maybe just chill out a little bit? This 
sobering statue can be found at Barcelona's Pobla New Cemetery, where I don't feel like I, I'm going to be taking a trip anytime soon. No thanks. Scary and really sad at number nine, we have this unidentified gravestone from Oskaloosa. This is in the Oskaloosa Pleasant View Cemetery in the United States. This stone reads, Unidentified baby girl found in Delaware River, May 1977. That is so horrendously sad. The baby was never identified, and neither her parents or killer, if they were separate people, have ever been found either. Coming into number eight, this next tombstone is pretty much just a fancy way of saying you're next. It reads, To the person passing by, as you are now, so once was I. As I am now, you soon will be. Prepare yourself and pray for me. Wait, wait, wait. As I am now, you soon will be. But, like, Oscar, you're dead. Oh, I see. This tombstone is pretty much just a direct threat, telling you that, yeah. You're gonna die. Who even needs words when you could just let the whole horrifying stone itself do the talking? <laughs> Am I right? Coming into number seven, we have this very, very awake but dead baby. It is always depressingly sad when a baby dies, but is this any way to immortalize them? The baby is sitting bolt upright in a crib while a lamb that may or may not have been some kind of animal sacrifice lays at the foot of the bed. Hi there, cold dead baby stone eyes. Yeah, why are you following me wherever I go? I, I don't like it. I couldn't be near it. It's too much. Coming into number six, we have a victim of the beast. If you visit the Salt Lake City Cemetery, you might not want to leave any flowers on Lily E. Grace's grave for fear of the repercussions. It seems like Lily, who died in November 1958, aged 77, was a victim of the beast, or so her gravestone says. They even added a 666 at the end of the inscription just to make it clear which beast she fell foul of. Weirdly, her husband is also also buried at the same cemetery, but far away from his wife's corpse. The website weirdus.com claims a woman who walked on the grave later had an accident with her car door, which is spooky. I wanted to add something scary, but like a little bit more fun at number five. We have this descriptive cause of death. Back in the day, it was traditional to write a cause of death on a person's tombstone. Poor old George Spencer Millet, who lost his life by essentially being kissed to death, has this for a gravestone. That's right, George was just 15 when he fell foul of an Inca razor stabbing him to death. His tombstone basically does all of the talking, we'll tell you all about it. He was trying to escape birthday kisses from fellow office workers when he fell on the eraser ink. Weird. Obviously it's sad, but a deep dark part of me just loves this description on his gravestone. Another pretty frank and way less hilarious tombstone at number four, we have Pressed to Death. Again, part of the descriptive tombstone category, it seems that Giles Corey was pressed to death, which is a really, really horrible way to go and makes reading his stone, like, really uncomfortable and claustrophobic. It turns out that he was actually murdered as part of the Salem Witch Trials, which makes his death even spookier. This gravestone can be found at the Charter Street Cemetery in Salem, Massachusetts. We have a murder victim's gravestone at number three. I think, like, a murder victim's gravestone is always disconcerting. William Wood was murdered in Derbyshire, England in 1823. Not only that, he was actually pretty brutally murdered. The almost 200 year old gravestone marks the spot where he was found dead and frankly tells the world that indeed he was murdered. He was here murdered, apparently. This is very chilling and if you want to find it for yourself, it's between Disley and Whaley Bridge, but personally, I wouldn't want to walk down there alone at night. Coming into number two, putting the head into headstone, we have. I guess this head in a stone. Ooh. Nothing sends a scarier tombstone message than a physical head in a box. The head belongs to the patron saint of venereal disease. Yes, there is a patron saint of venereal disease, which actually sends an even scarier message. The saint was Saint Vitalis of Assisi, who died in 1370. His name is on the case, but to be honest, I'm much less concerned with what is on the case than I am with what is in it. Finally, at number one, we have an Ouija board headstone. So you know Ouija boards are used for contacting the dead, right? Well, what better place to do this than in a graveyard where, I mean, it's literally filled with dead people. Inventor of this spirit game, Elijah Bond, insisted on an Ouija board headstone for his own grave, which is very terrifying and very creepy. I mean, imagine playing with that thing, like, 
absolutely no from me. Get me far away from there. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have Kate McCormick. This tombstone truly leaves one of the darkest and saddest stories I have ever heard. This stone reads, Kate McCormick, seduced and pregnant by her father's friend, unwed, she died from abortion, her only choice, abandoned in life and death by family, with but a single rose from her mother, buried only through the kindness of unknown benefactors. Died February 1876, age 21, victim of an unforgiving society. Have mercy on us. The story of what happened to Kate is obviously quite clear in the message and is truly an absolute nightmare. A trip to the cemetery is always a bit of a grim experience, but when you see something like this, it really does take it to a new level. All we can do is hope that wherever Kate is now, she is resting in peace and know that we haven't forgotten her or her story. In our number nine spot today, we have Herman Harband. Herman decided to have a headstone made ahead of time before his death, but didn't even actually end up getting buried there, which is quite interesting. Herman had a message he wanted to get across, however, and he certainly did just that. It's actually a bit of a sad and terrifying story, and it really shows the place Herman was in when he made it. The stone reads, Herman Harband, born in 1918. My wife, Eleanor Arthur of Queens, New York, lived like a princess for 20 years, traveling the world with the best of everything. When I went blind, she tried to poison me, took all my money, all my medication, and left me in the dark alone and sick. It's a miracle I escaped. I won't see her in heaven because surely she's going to hell. Herman absolutely went off, but it definitely seems like he kind of had a right to because that story is simply terrible. Good news is that Herman ended up getting remarried and he lived a happy and very long life until he passed away in 2011. In our number eight spot today, we have Francis and Mary Huntrudes. This stone is one of the less sad ones on this list today, thankfully. And while still haunting, it's in more of a poetic or beautiful way. Or at least I think so. This tombstone is from Francis and Mary Huntrudes, and their stone tells the story of their lives and their love. It reads about how they were both born on the same day in 1600. They were married on their shared birthday, they had 12 children together, and then they both passed away on their birthdays just shortly after turning 80. That is quite some love story, and honestly, what are the chances? But the final two lines of the text on the tombstone really sum up the story so perfectly. They read, each tender heart so fit a match surely could never be, both in their lives and in their deaths agree. Maybe this match was simply a serendipitous coincidence, but I definitely would like to think otherwise. In our number seven spot today, we have the Tazacorte Martyrs Memorial. This one is a little different from the others on this list today for a couple reasons. Firstly, these are tombstones for many individuals. And secondly, because there isn't a message left with them that I want to talk about, but instead just the entire eerie nature of the whole situation. This may appear as a gravesite that has been flooded, but it's actually an underwater memorial. Memorial. In 1570, a group of Jesuit missionaries boarded a ship from Portugal to Brazil. A French pirate named Jacques Souri boarded the ship along with them, and from there, he and his men took the lives of all of the priests. Some of them even had their limbs cut off before they were thrown overboard. The lone survivor of this day was the ship's cook. The memorial features 40 crosses for each of the lives lost, and it is located near the area of the massacre, which is close to La Palma Island, 18 meters below the surface. I might be alone in this belief, but I think that there is just something extremely haunting about an underwater memorial. In our number six spot today, we have Jeremy Bibb Balasok. This tombstone goes hand in hand with an absolutely insane story about Jerry's life. The short of it is that Jerry, who is a professional wrestler, ended up vanishing after getting in trouble with the law. He was wanted for charges of fraud, and while no one knew his whereabouts for six months, when his mother picked up a magazine one day which featured the victims of the horrible cultist Jonestown Massacre, she sadly saw her son's picture alongside all of the others. This led to there being a tombstone of course made for Jerry, although his body Body would have been already buried in California. So this all happened in 1978, but let's flash forward to 1990. In that year, a man named Ricky A. Weta was arrested for attempting to take someone's life. He was fingerprinted upon his arrest, and who would have thought Ricky turned out to be none other than the presumed dead Jerry? This whole story was of course huge national news because how could this have possibly happened? In the end, Jerry was caught and brought to justice. 
a few separate times, before he passed away in a prison in Nicaragua from a heart attack that was brought on by the heat in the prison, which is a whole separate issue we'll have to save for another video. In our number five spot today, we have Martha Jane Mary McCoon. Mary's tombstone tells the tale of her final days and it truly feels like it is something out of a horror movie. Mary was born around 1838 and passed away most definitely not long enough after in 1855. She was pregnant at the time and the writing on her tombstone really says it all, so I might as well just read it to you. Bitten by rabid coyote, developed rabies, became violent, was smothered with feather bed. Apparently at the time of being bit by this coyote, Mary's husband was out of town for work and by the time he got back, his wife had already passed away and been buried and he had absolutely no idea that any of this was happening, which is extremely tragic. It was so horrible that this was the way that Mary's life was taken and it definitely makes you grateful for modern medicine, although rabies still manages to claim the lives of around 59,000 people per year. In our number four spot today, we have Mona Harold Vanny. This tombstone reads as a letter written to Mona from her children, but it certainly is not what you'd be expecting. Instead of the nice and lovely message you might think, Mona's three children detail what an absolute nightmare she was to them growing up. The stone reads, To our mother. You spent your life expressing animosity for nearly every person you encountered, including your children. Within hours of his death, you even managed to declare your husband of 57 years an unsuited spouse or father. Hopefully you are now insulated from all of the dissatisfaction you found in human relationships. Wow, they really did not hold back one little bit. If it makes you feel better, the message that was left on their father's stone was much more kind and loving. I guess one thing is clear, and that is that Buddy, Jackie, and Mike were not messing around. In our number three spot today, we have Charles H. Salmon. Charles Tombstone tells the story of a medical malpractice that ended up leading to his death. Basically what happened is that Charles fell ill with a cold and was given medicine to help treat it. Little did he know, but he wasn't given the proper medicine, but was instead given morphine. When he went back to the doctor to explain that he wasn't getting any better, they also gave him morphine and this caused him to end up overdosing on the drug. It truly is not quite clear how this could have possibly happened, and I'm not sure if Charles' family ever saw any form of justice for this terrible mistake, but it really is just such an awful story. In our number two spot today, we have Andrew J. Olsack. Andrew's tombstone is really straight to the point, but it is one of the saddest we have on today's list. His stone reads, Abandon an old age by wife and children. May God be more understanding and merciful. There really is a lot to unpack here. First, I have so many questions as to what happened and what led to this abandonment. Second, I have to know if this is his way of sticking it to his family who he claims abandoned him, or if this is more of just a simple goodbye. Either way, whatever the details are behind this story, coming upon this message in a graveyard would certainly make your heart sink a bit and definitely be one of those things that you just remember. In our number one spot today, we have Leo Matlovich. Leo's tombstone is one that is certainly not easily forgotten. This stone doesn't even say his name, but the reason for that will become quite clear. First, we have to tell Leo's story. Leo was a war hero in the Air Force and he challenged the policy of homosexuality in the military. Through Leo's bravery and activism, he was able to actually change a few things for gay people serving in the military, the effects of which can still be seen today. Despite Leo receiving both a bronze star and a purple heart for his service, in the end he was still discharged for being a gay man. He ended up passing away in San Francisco in 1988 after complications from HIV AIDS. His tombstone reads, a gay Vietnam veteran. While I was in the military, they gave me a medal for killing two men and a discharge for loving one. There is nothing I could possibly say that would be more profound than that, so I'll just end off this point by saying Leo and all the things he did and fought for will truly never be forgotten. Mm -hmm.